So welcome everybody to another Behind the Theme. Today we will continue with history of Thutmosis III. In the last episode, we talked about the beginnings of Thutmosis III and now we'll talk about the army that fought with him, the New Era Kingdom's army. Now once war was decided upon, the first thing Pharaoh Thutmosis III did was to gather his conscripts. This was because the Canaanite army outnumbered his professional force, of which many were from the Sudan, the Nomibians, and yes, in case you were wondering, these are the Nomibians who fought with Hannibal and of who Hannibal relied so much of to beat the Romans. In fact, even back in these times, the Nomibians were known for their fearsome fighting ability and could even become generals in the Egyptian army, even though there was discrimination against them. Now, conscription, strangely, was not that disruptive to Egyptian society, as in fact, it was actually quite regular for all kinds of reasons for building the pyramids, waterworks, public works, so on. This conscription rose Pharaoh's army to about 10 to 20,000 men. I give you an estimate because from the sources that I read, each of them give a different amount from 10,000 to 12,000 to even up to 20,000 men. This force was gathered at the fortress of Tejaru inside Egypt but near its northern border, 200 miles from Megiddo. And once they were ready, they were on the move. And this was probably a good idea as every day, every 10,000 men consumed 14 tons of grain and 95 liters of water per day. And even Egypt, with its wealth of the Nile, which could easily feed 3 million people with surplus, could not feed such an army indefinitely. Now what kind of troops did Pharaoh Thutmosis III command? Well, let's have a look. Now the formation of warfare at the time was not men standing in clean rows and such, but it basically followed a simple plan, which was chariots first, followed by the archers attack, followed by the infantry. Now the Egyptian chariot was a evolved lighter chariot than the ones that they had copied from, from the Hyksos, and had six spokes instead of four to make the wheels stronger. Thus with all these changes, you can see that the Egyptians prioritized speed over strength. Also the archer on the chariot used a composite bow, which was a more expensive bow used by officers and charioteurs. Due to its mix of several materials that made the bow a lot more powerful, the composite bow was able to shoot accurately at twice the distance of the common Egyptian bow at 1,000 feet. Now the common bow, on the other hand, was made from a single rod of wood, was easily mass-produced and was for the infantry archers. And each infantry archer was also provided with ivory tip arrows at about 10 per person. The close combat infantry on the other hand was armed with spears or slashing halberd battle axes which had evolved from the older piercing duckbill kind. These axes were used one-handed as the infantry also carried shields. The other troops in the god armor was for the infantry segmented raw hide armor or composite ones mixed with copper scales for the charioteurs and heavy or copper scale armor worn by the generals and pharaoh. This army, when ready, marched 15 miles a day, sneaking through the desert to Megiddo 200 miles away. They were able to do this as prior to the army coming that way, Egyptian water caravans would place water jars every 70 kilometers to feed the army as it crossed the desert. And we even know from a papyrus found of what the normal foot soldier went through, it stated that as an Egyptian soldier, he marched with no sandals for the foot soldiers and drank salty water that smelled foul every one in three days. Now this march of course slowed down as they got further from Egypt and the crucial point of the story comes when Thutmosis III and his army reaches the town of Yemen. But that is a story for the Megiddo campaign next time. So that is a look at the Egyptian army that marched with Thutmosis III in the New Era Kingdom. So subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Thank you very much, until next word.